And now we can just talk. We can just do some free talk. If there's any mods that want to come on right now and just shoot the shit, Terry, you here, buddy? Cool, man. Let me bring on Harry. We can talk. We can, we can, we can make this some kind of podcast style. We will absolutely get to all your questions today. I promise you. I'm, I'm going to try to leave no question out. And then, uh, again, man, we just want this to be fun, man. We just want this to be fun. Hold on there, Harry. Yo, what's up? Yo, Harry. Harry, what's up, buddy? Uh, I'm just, I'm fucking tired. In Canada, like, um, well, I just got my uh, vaccine or whatever for COVID. Oh, did you? And, uh, yeah, it, it was a long ass fucking wait. And now I just feel like a little lightheaded. So I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I was Dude, like, everybody feels like that after that's what I'm hearing, man. I haven't got one yet, but I, I, I hear that everybody feels that same way, dude. So take it easy, bro. Yeah. Definitely rest up the rest of the day, man. Like give yourself that time to really like, dude, I'll just give you an example, right, Harry. So my dad was in town the last couple of days and, and I was telling the guys in the morning, like, I never get to see my dad, bro. I never, like, literally maybe once a year. And I love my dad. He's, like, kind of like my best friend. He's one of my best buds. And he's, and he's really like me. He's 63 years old, but he's, like, 30 years old. He even is spitting yeah. image at me. We went golfing. Oh, and yeah, like, I saw that. I texted. And I yeah, said, right? Like, like, he was funny, right? Like, he's a funny guy. He's really fucking funny. And and he's just he's just young energy so when he comes out it's like hanging with a with like a best bud and and he left this morning because he was staying with me for three days he lives in cali and dude i was so depressed man i couldn't trade today my emotions were fucked up bro i couldn't trade i was really? i was legitimately like emotionally fucked up really it, i swear to god i closed out a swing on tesla that i've had for like a month that's all i did dude i was like man i really want to hit entx i really want to hit dude i was too fucked up and i knew that if, if something went against me in my day trading with such like yeah. rocky emotions, yeah. I knew that I had to give myself the day or I'd really try to st start fighting a stock. I would yeah. clearly like, dude, some days you just got to give yourself the day. Yeah, bro. That's, that's what I've been telling a lot of people is like, if you, if you like, um, you know, if you, if you have like a big bill or like, you know, maybe a family member leaves, like, you know, you're talking about, or like, you know, just like anything in your personal life, you, it can, it can translate so easy to the market where you start fighting a stock short on the front side because yep. you're pissed and you, you know, you take it out on that. And like, it's good that, you know, I mean, like, obviously you're like a veteran. So like you recognize that easy, but like for the newer people who are listening, <laughs> yeah. you know, like we all recognize that type of stuff where we're like, yeah, we need to, to take the day off because we're just emotionally out of it, you know? Well, well, and what's so funny about you saying that, Harry, is in the beginning, bro, when I used to say that, because I said it for years, dude. I said it for years, bro. I'd be like, I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to give myself the day. And I couldn't. Yeah. And I couldn't no. because I didn't know yet. But now I've been trading for so long. I yeah. know it's not that my mind's messed up if the stock is going my way. It's not that. If the one day... That death candle is the one out of 10 that doesn't work my way. I know I'm going to fight it because my emotions are done. Yeah, 100%. And 100%. that's where you know that after seven years, you've got to pump the brakes. And I knew I'd be very weak today if a yeah. spot went against me. So I actually sat on the sidelines, man. Yeah. No, I mean, that's good. I mean, even well, it's just like we were talking about last time. Like the ability to sit on the sidelines is hard. It's easy when you like, when you're, how can I say this? It's, it's, it's easy when you're first starting out or like you don't have an account or like you're paper trading to sit out on the sidelines when you have a real account and like, you know how to trade and shit like that. It's hard as hell to sit on the sidelines. Cause you're like, shit, this dip in support. I got to go in and get that. This, you know, this <laughs> pop, I can easily short that right now. Dude. You have no idea, bro. When I saw this on ENTX, I was like, oh my God, that's it. That's it. I was like, that's it. That's it. That's it. And oh, bro, I you got to check out this savage long I got on this. I wanted to post it. Savage long. When I saw this, Harry, I was like, no, dude, I have the day off. I have the day off. I have the day off. And I was just like, I was really in my head. Yeah. I knew, yeah. I knew that if yeah. this is the one death candle that doesn't cooperate, I'm going to lose big today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after a candle like that, like I even said, like, well, I said after I sold it, cause I got out at 788 and I said like, once, once a candle like that comes, like it's done, like the odds of that reclaiming are like, like it's just not going to it's just like 10% odds. It's like 90% yeah. odds that you will get lower. 
Yeah, hundred percent. So I was just like, nah, I'm leaving this for the day, like peace. And look how it tries to stuff that uh, 760 level, just tries to get up over it and then just uh, immediately slammed right back Dude, down. That was nasty, bro. That was yeah. nasty. Like, you could write, you could draw it technically at five, 750 because that's a whole and a half dollar. But this is the level that we're talking about, guys, with this like 760 touch and just dead. Yeah, yeah. And everyone who's long in the breakout is just smoked. I, 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 I think that as traders, man, you got to know your weaknesses and you got to know your strengths. And on a day where you're not feeling it, on a day where you fight with a spouse, where you get in a yeah. fender bender, when you, when you take a vaccine, you, you got to <laughs> give yourself the day. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, I was pulling out of the parking lot and there was a friggin' Mercedes AMG with the license plate Bitcoin. <laughs> get the fuck out. <laughs> Look, I'll send the fucking photo in the Dude, chat. Send it, send it, send it. That's I'm not hysterical. even joking. I'm not even joking. I Thank took a much, picture dude. of it. It, it was, <laughs> watch it be Michael Burry's. <laughs> fucking, it's, let me see. It's sending here. Yeah, Chrissy, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. That's funny, dude. It's just a C43. Yeah, but still. He he's one fucking, Bitcoin. Oh, definitely, for sure. <laughs> that's so funny how did he get the, what nobody else had the license plate bitcoin like this is the only guy in the world like are you kidding me bro i i tried to go for the license plate nasdaq and some guy uh i know who the guy was like because like in canada like where i live like it's super small and i saw that same license plate and i was like fuck i tried to get that and then so i asked the guy like i was like oh like do you trade do you whatever he's like uh no no, I don't really trade. I just, I, uh, I own a bit of Tesla. And I was like, well, where'd you get in from? He's like 700. I'm like, oh, fuck. Wait, he's got, wait, 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 wait. Pre, like pre-split? Yeah. Oh, that's really good then. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. Because so a 700 like, average right now is dog shit. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, I believe it was pre-split. Because if and it's not pre-split, he's underwater still 50 points. Well, yeah, I didn't really get into it with him. I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. He's like, yeah, it was, I think it is pre-split, like 100% it's pre-split. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so he's he's not changing his license plate anytime soon. So I was like, oh, <laughs> that's so funny, man. <laughs> and oh, I'm not taking Bitcoin because I'm not walking around like a bro, Dogecoin I'm bag holder. So, I'm so bearish on Bitcoin, I can't even tell you. Oh, me too. Me too. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put 10 cents of my money into bitcoin ethereum or any of these nasty coins no no it's going to take a while to the thing is is that it's going to take a while to clear everyone out and then maybe it might go for another run like i wouldn't be surprised if we hit 60k but it's got to clear a lot of bullish people well what i came to terms with is in my endless hours of research is there is so much fraud in the bitcoin industry and how it's not yeah. oh my god dude i mean when i say i went down the rabbit hole i can't even like i can't I, i'm not even gonna talk about it it's so bad yeah but there are only a couple coins that i think will truly make it yeah 99 percent. i feel this this industry is going to get leveled and unfortunately people don't know why that's the problem. They just think it's something. No, dude, the level of fraud and the fake money that they're printing to back this shit, dude, it will come crumbling down like Michael, like the 2008 oh. housing crisis, like Michael Burry's talking about. Oh man. And I just can't wait. Like, I'm just sitting here, like, like I'm in Canada and I want to buy a fucking house, but it's like, I'm not buying a house that someone bought last year for 250 K that are now selling it for 400. Well, let me tell you something. That, that was why I didn't build a house in the beginning of the year, bro. I literally yeah. had plans. I had a builder ready. And he said, yeah. dude, do not build right now. And I'm your builder. I'm literally telling you, wait, yeah. you are at the peak. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. And, uh, my, my girlfriend's friend, her dad builds houses and he's built like a house for every one of his kids. And he's like to her, like, wait a couple of years and then you'll, you'll get a house, you know? Yeah. You know, the, the thing, the thing about people, which they do in stocks, they do in Bitcoin, they do in real estate is it's an endless cycle of retail euphoria. Uh, yeah. I get excited. So I have to buy it. I don't care where it's at. I just want to be a part of the movement. I just want to get in. I just, yeah. and of course we can be wrong about Bitcoin. We can be wrong about things. Yeah. But the point is when, when the whole world is obsessing over something, that's generally not the time you should be buying. Yeah. hundred percent. I, I, I definitely, definitely agree. Definitely hundred percent. That's why I just said to my girlfriend, like, we'll stay in like our apartment right now. And then when the time's ready, like 
fuck, I might even build a house. Like I might even fucking build one, you know? Well, and people underestimate apartment living, Harry. See, the problem is, is people, well, haters who don't understand anything about money, they'll be like, oh, you're in an apartment, you're poor. No, dude, the the power of an apartment is I am such an advocate of apartments because it's not ownership. You can build an apartment anytime you want. It's cool. I like to call it being in cash. So you're not like when you're in a stock long or short, you're invested, dude, you own it. When you are, say, renting or in an apartment, dude, you can up and bail any time. You have no fucking ownership. It's a, yeah, it's a even Grant Cardone, the biggest real estate guy in the world, is like, dude, only rent, only rent, only rent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love I, it. I, yeah. I, yeah. No, I know exactly what you mean. That's how I picture it too, as well. Like you know, like you can hate on it all you want, but like. If I wanted to fucking move wherever, I could literally move wherever the fuck I want, like in less than a month. Oh, of course, dude. Of course. Yeah. But but the option of the responsibility is a whole different argument than do you have the money to build the house? It's do you yeah. want to be a homeowner? Yeah. And do no, you want to deal with what comes with it? That's the difference that people don't get. Yeah. Uh, dude, I know million. Dude, I know people worth a hundred million dollars that still live in an apartment, no, a really nice apartment. They yeah. don't want that freaking. They don't want to be tied to something. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And I respect that. Yeah. 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 No, no, it frees up couch. A house is not an asset, especially if you live in it. I cannot stress that enough. Stan gets it. A house is an asset if you rent it out. But but in renting it out, you still own it. You still got to deal with the shit. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, people don't get that. People don't get that until they're actually in that situation to make a decision. Completely. completely Dude, I love that. It's just like being ready for investing or stock trading, right? It's like, are you ready to risk real money off a simulator? Uh, You're going to be invested now. You know, a simulator is like renting an apartment. You you can bail at any time. Like, you're not obligated to shit. Yeah, no, no. You're just learning. You're just, you're just taking it easy. You can up and go, especially if you're a nomad that just moves and moves and moves. (laughs) That'd be dope. Honestly, I'm down to do that after COVID. I was talking to my girlfriend about it. Just She's an accountant. Go everywhere. Right? Yeah, I, I was literally like, we could just travel for like a year, you know? You're going to change um, your name to like Travel Trader or something like that? Like trade on a laptop? <laughs> no, I think that's kind of a little, not for me, but. I, I think that's been done. That's pretty cliche at this point. Yeah, like I think I'd just probably keep her low key. But, you know, uh, I mean has been doing a lot of that as well you know, uh, just traveling around and like trading as well. And, you know, I like, I have some money saved as well. Like, I mean, right now, if I didn't trade for a year, like I'd be fine. But, um, I guess like for me, like I was just, I'm definitely thinking about that. Like, you know, just like fucking traveling for like six months or a year just after COVID. Cause like I couldn't really go anywhere at all. And like, the they locked the fucking border down here. You couldn't yeah. travel. Like I haven't been like, let's say three to four hours from my house in like since COVID started because you just can't go anywhere. Like the, the inner provincial shit is just all locked down. So yeah, I that's going to be high maintenance for a while. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just the case that it, <laughs> look at Tay is doing a flex on us right now. This is what's called a swing flex, a 382 pre-split Tesla average. Yeah. Tay, that's called flexing on us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Harry, I, I totally feel you on that, man. That's just the nature of anything, right? Is like, yeah, especially with, with these things that are, you know, like COVID, which, is, which was so unpredictable and the predictability of how it's going to last and if variants are going to come or et cetera, et cetera, it's unpredictable. So people are going to be really high maintenance about it, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just going to be one of those things that, that gets in the way of routine for people. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Welcome to Canada. Now go back. We don't want you here. <laughs> Edson, how lovely. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Stock, I pay, uh, uh, stock slayer. I pay cash for non-assets like a car, motorcycle, house, never borrowed to buy non-assets. What I learned from millionaires. But exactly, exactly. Don't like, wh- why make payments on something if you don't have to? You, the APR is just going to eat you alive. The interest is just going to eat you alive, right? And even if it doesn't eat you alive, it's just going to be money that you're unnecessarily spending. I totally understand that. Yeah, hundred percent. Harry, what's uh, dude? Outside of that, man, how's Canada right now? How's it, how's the weather? Uh, the weather here it's twenty one degrees here. Jesus. I don't know what's. I don't know. No, but that's not in Fahrenheit. 
Oh, got you. So, like, compare it to like 120 degrees in here, Arizona. Let's say uh, it's 69 Fahrenheit here. Okay, that's not. That's it's not, not bad. bad. That's it's that's not, actually not too bad. It's warmed up both sides, probably. Yeah, yeah. No, it's warmed up a lot, which is nice. I mean, that here, I'm in a t-shirt and shorts. Like, that's like summer here. I was gonna say 21 degrees, dude. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. That'd be that'd be fucking crazy, dude. We had a heat wave recently in Arizona. Because here's a here's the thing that I always say about Arizona, and we can talk about some stocks after this, guys, if you want. Uh, the the thing I always say about Arizona is it is heaven on earth eight months out of the year. There are four months out of the year where you are going to wish you were anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix, James. It's really big. Phoenix is massive. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's 100 in Denver. I'm dying. All right. So I think we had some quick. Oh, shit. James is in Tucson. Very nice, man. Yeah, we're, I guess we're close. I'm kind of new to the area, probably a couple hours because um, it's so big out here. I think this was the first question I saw. Uh, Harry, can you help me understand the short uptick role, short interest and margin calls? I'm guessing she's super new, have never traded shorts before and interested in learning. I've watched a ton of videos since joining. So guys, if you have any questions, please post them right here and we will get to them. Again, this is kind of free talk. This is kind of fun. If there's any other mods that want to come on, please do. But we're here to kind of answer your guys' questions and just kind of have fun in the process. So Harry, you want to take that first one? Yeah. Um, I mean, short uptick rule, that'd be SSR. Yep. And, you know, basically, you know, when a stock goes down too much, they put SS, I'm just explaining this super basic, but you know, when a stock goes down too much, they put on SSR. And basically what that is, is like, you know, you can't slam the bit. You have to wait on the ask. Um, and for a lot of short sellers, that can be a pain because, you know, if you're, if you're getting a lot of people, like every single uptick, you know, you need an uptick to get filled. So if it just washes right away, um, a lot of people can get short at a bad average and it can trap you. So it's not really great right. for shorts. Um, you know, short interest would just be per percent of the short or percent of the float that's, that's short and a margin call. Um, hopefully you don't ever get it, but it's basically, you know, when you've blown your account, and the broker has to close the position for you. Um, never traded shorts before, but I'm interested in learning. We definitely have a ton of content here for you. I've watched the videos. I've watched a ton of videos since joining. Yeah, um, yep. you know, you can keep just going through. And um, yeah, there's a lot of that stuff in the the trading basics with uh, Joe Kelly. Definitely. And Chrissy, the thing about the short uptick rule, or basically SSR, is what you're saying is. You know, it, I, I get a lot of secondary questions on this. Like, hey, Tosh, how do I see if something is SSR outside of calculating it yourself, which we talked about in the videos. It's, it's just on your platform, guys. Literally, if you have the right platform like DOS or something, you're going to see it in the corner. It's going to say yeah. this stock is actually on SSR. So you don't just have to guess. You can actually see the visual identification that, oh, okay, ENTX or XYZ is on SSR or it's not on SSR. Um, and then margin calls, <laughs> broker wants their money. <laughs> Broker's yeah. coming to collect on your ass. <laughs> That's what that is. Yeah. Uh, let's see, where are we at? I think, I think that was the first question. How would you have traded ATOS today? Uh, I wouldn't have. I don't, I don't like this stuff. I, I don't like this. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have traded ATOS today. That's not my thing. Yeah, I, I like low-hanging fruits when they're like day two. I don't like, like it's been multi days and then this and then this, like maybe you wait for the mountain ranges, but like, again, like this is just not my type of short. I like day twos on where it's a very, very clear day one after a day one. I just don't like random day twos after a day that's been down. It's not my thing. It's not my thing. I've just never been. So I wouldn't have traded that today, Cash, even if I was trading today. Yeah. And I think the thing about the first red day setup is that like, if, if like you go back to ATOS and chat and before, like I didn't really hear about ATOS till today. And so I'm, unless we have everyone, like let's say we had, uh, you know, um, that, uh, what was it? That A stock that was running and everyone was talking about it and everyone was saying first red day in the chat and Alex was saying first red day, kind of similar to AMC where AMC had all that hype on it. Yeah. Those are the best first red days when everyone in the NASDAQ knows about that stock. We have a ton of people long, you just that hype, that euphoria. Everyone's like, wow, did you see X, Y, Z 
like that's a crazy runner. It's multi-day. That's Those are where we're talking about. Yep. Yeah. ATOS, I didn't really hear a lot of chatter about it. I think that that other A stock yesterday, what was it, like ALT or something like that? ALF uh, or? ALF. ALF. Yeah, um, see, this, yeah, no, this is what we're talking about. Harry, that's exactly what I was explaining. It's a massive day one that's very clear. And then this is a nice day two low hanger. When you're talking about ATOS, it's like, who's talking about it? It's a random down day after some random, like, yeah, like, I just don't like this. Like, and specifically, the only way maybe I'd even contemplate a short on this is if we had a pivot point that matched with the outer lines. But as you can see, no pivot point just down here. And I am not hitting this low. So definitely not. Yeah. No, especially, yeah, with that range, yeah. Yep, sure. correct. So let, let pivot points also be your guide, guys. Let it be your guide. It's going to help you massively. Like, don't, don't guess it. If there's a very clear pivot – where it correlates with the previous mountain ranges or the previous tops, that, that might be much more convincing for you to say, hey, I'll, I'll take a stab at this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. I have a question in regards for a broker, for someone under PDT. So I'm currently going through the videos and paper trading first red day, low hanging fruit, and death candles on TOS. Overall, I feel I have an affinity to having a short bias. With being under PDT, I want some advice from the mods and other members on what would be the best broker to rock with using TOS and a cash account and trading uh, longs till PDT. Uh, let's just, I, I, I totally understand your question right here, MD Wizard. Uh, dude, what, TOS is just not going to be a short whatsoever of an account unless you're only doing big caps. So when it comes to being under PDT, yeah. obviously you're not going to be able to get Cobra, but you could get Venom or you could get Trade Zero. Um, yeah. I definitely recommend those because you can long in any of them and you can definitely short when they have the shares. But if you're using TD Ameritrade as kind of like a home unit for both, you're just going to be failing miserably on the short side all the time because you're just not going to be able to find shares with them. Yeah, and I'm not sure how Venom is for Boros. I'm not really sure. I know TZ will always have the main ones. It'll just be a bit more expensive. Um, but I mean, I, I honestly, like I'm a big believer. Like if you want to be... Um, a short trader and you're under PDT, you should just practice shorts because if you're trying to learn longing and you know, you don't really understand it and you're just sitting there like struggling and struggling and struggling, but you see great short setups, like I I'm a big believer, like you should just hit those short setups, you know, you should really wait till those death candles happen and then short the pops, you know, instead of just trying to long these setups that you really don't understand and, and buying the breakout and you know getting into stuff that's hard like we have first bounce here and we have videos if you learn how to long but like if you don't like longing and you really like shorting you know like what are you doing you know you should just focus on the shorts that's how i kind of feel you know because if you're waking up every morning and you're like shit i have to long again one more time till i'm over pdt like that sucks. Right. And, and, and you're not going to have that, that passion and you're not like that. That's just that I would not like that at all. So, I mean, I think that you should just go with probably TZ and just, you know, uh, watch the videos and just hit like first red day setups and hit low hanging fruit setups and hit, um, you know, those broken stock setups and just slowly build your account that way and just stay away from shorting the hot chicks, sh stay away from, from shorting those, those runners. And I think you'll do fine. I agree. I agree. Very well said. Uh, let's see, please for this guy earlier. Yep. Um, guys, I have a question for the Q and a later, please. Uh, do, 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 low hanging fruit. I'm trying to scan for these myself every day as I want to get really good at finding them for a small account. What is the mods experience? The sweet spot for stock prices for low hanging fruit. So uh, number one to answer that is the way to scan for them is anything that ran on day one guys is usually a low hanging fruit day two, right? Usually it's a really good setup for a low hanging fruit day two. So just whatever ran on day one, you want to pay attention to day two, like we were talking about earlier with the pivot points in the outer lines. Number two, for a very small account with $2,500, uh, you know, that's a toss up because that's more of a bias as per mod. But dude, I don't necessarily recommend shorting with such a small account. I actually recommend doing a first bounce like with Harry in his style. I swear to God. Yeah. And also I think number, the best low hanging fruits are going to be the ones that have a lot of attention the day before. That was a big runner because then you know you have that supply when it comes down. Right. But if it's a stock that 
like maybe was broken the day before and it just lingered around and not a lot of people were long. And, you know, those are the ones that are a lot harder to trade low hanging fruit. But that ALF today, where everyone was talking about it yesterday, and finally, you know, we get that pop and we go lower, those are going to be the best kinds of low hanging fruit setups. And, and, and maybe, like, I, I'm not sure, it might not have gotten to bows long or to bows line, sorry. But just as an example, those are going to be the best types of setups just because you know you're going to have that supply when the thing starts to crack, right? Yep, correct. And then, and then fundamentally, guys, remember the reason why we're saying like I, the reason why I'm sure Harry feels the same, but the reason why I say I think you should be a long trader when you have such a small account is you don't get wrecked by the fees, dude. Fees yeah. of shorting are no joke, man. Yeah. It's a yeah. it's a fee yeah. problem. Hundred percent. Yeah. If you have a, a really small account, I would definitely recommend first bounce because that's really your only option. Definitely. Um, definitely. You know, but if you have like a 10K account and you're just like, or even like a 7K or something like that, what do you consider a really small account? Something under 2K, I'd consider really small. Um, even under 4K, I'd probably consider really small. Um, you know, but I think like if you, uh, I've just kind of, I read that guy's question and then got off track. Freaking <laughs> vaccine in my fucking head now. But, um, you know, yeah, I think like definitely first bounce is probably going to be your only option and you can get really good at first bounce to grow it. And if you're not greedy with first bounce, you can build an account super quick, but it's when you're trying to get every time over high a day on a first bounce or every time making a dollar or $2 a share. That's where I see a lot of people who kind of get in trouble, you know, dude. And, and, and here's also the other thing guys is what you're going to realize you're going to be so much better of a short seller when you know how to long stocks first. Yeah. It's just true. You need yeah, to know I'm how sure. they come down once they've gone up. Yeah. Because you know that everyone's trapped. You dude, know. That's the point. That's the point because, because dude, when you're a long trader, so the first two years of my trading career was long trader. I was doing the first bounce and built accounts on the first bounce. I didn't even know what it was called back then, dude. I was doing what Harry was doing seven years ago when I first started. I was like, oh man, this is really strong. It's pulling back to VWAP. Why the fuck wouldn't I long it here? It should continue up. This is a support. And like, dude, it just common sense for me, right? I built some accounts, but then I was like, okay, why am I always freaking out the second I get along? It's not my comfort zone. And I was like, oh man, I really like shorts because once I know that minute where, you know, when the reversal happens, if I feel like I was along, which I was, and but I wasn't comfortable. And then I saw the tide shift. I was like, okay, now I'm comfortable to just go a lot lower. And then I just found a comfortability in shorting where I knew I could hold 10 times as long. I just identified it better. But dude, I swear to God, like in the beginning, it just made sense to me. I said, dude, long, strong socks on the way up until support doesn't hold until the shift changes. Like it was that simple for me. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And I know a lot of people who do, um, who I, uh, well, Austin's really the only person that I know who can do it well, but um, they, they long the front side on the way up. And then once they see a death candle to signal that kind of backside, they kind of start shorting the pops. And there's a ton of people in the small cap world. I, I know there's definitely a couple in MIC, maybe even Midtown has done it before as well. There's a couple of people who have submitted charts that have done that as well. And um, you know, they go short on the backside and you know, so you can practice just, just going long on the front side. And then when you kind of grow that account, you can also kind of, you know, short the pops after a death candle, like, especially on a day like today. Yeah, man. If you learn how to long first and then you gravitate into shorting and be like, kind of like an ambidextrous short and long trader, the beauty about being a long trader first is you're going to know when your edge is gone, when like that death candle comes with stuff and then you can flop short, you can flip. Yeah. And I think with a lot of people, they like, the only people who are going long after a death candle are the people who missed the, the front side, right? So when you have the, the dip buyers underwater, you have the people who chased at the top underwater, that makes a great recipe for a short, right? Like Correct. you have all these people who probably missed from 6.8 to like 8.6 and they see that massive move and they just have FOMO immediately, right? They, they, they see that move and they're like, oh man, like I missed that. Like I need to, to buy it. And then you see these people 
who, who also probably saw ALF yesterday and let that go without them too. And they're like, this is going to be the one, this is going to be the one. And they chase it that 7.8, 7.6 level and they start chasing and it just doesn't work. And they're like, Oh, we'll chase again. doesn't work. And then they're underwater when we get to seven. And I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, how it works. We just get flooded with that supply and down it goes. Guys, this is what Harry's talking about for the longs like him this morning that did good on this run-up. The guys that missed this on the long side, they're long bias traders when they see this death candle, but they're hoping to God that now they got it on a discount. Now they got it on a bargain. Now the stock is on sale for another run-up. They're not taking into consideration that this is not just a drop or a drop to support. Dude, this could be the signal and likely is the signal to the end. They're just so FOMO'd out from missing this run-up that now they get in here and then they just get dumped on the rest of the day. And that's when you really get fucked up psychologically. Yeah, hundred percent. Totally. Uh, Chrissy, we definitely answered that earlier. Um, I see most of the traders are discretionary. Is there anyone who specialize in quantitative programming, algo trading? Um, not that I know of, but I don't know, Harry, you know anybody that does that? And also it's not really something that I'd really want to get into just because I know that every single uh, algo on Wall Street is definitely built by people who went to Harvard. So, I mean, I don't really want to compete against algos like that. Uh, that's why I just, I didn't really want to get into it because I knew that, you know, all those algorithms and all those friggin' uh, machines, like they're going to fight your machine. You know, you have to fight against those things, you know, to get positions and, and it's just super, super hard. So not something that I really wanted to get into. I no. totally agree, man. I totally agree. It's just, dude, why fight the strongest or the strongest or smartest people in the world or machines when you can yeah. just wait for a fucking death candle, dude? A dumbass could make money on death candles. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room, dude. It's not necessary. Yeah, and that that death candle is probably from some alco just dumping their position and just pulling their bids for the day, you know? <laughs> dude, literally. That's a Goldman Sachs guy just saying, eh, fuck this stock. Yeah, he's like, you know what? It's uh, it's you know, ten o'clock or so. I think I need to go and uh, chill in the yacht for the day. <laughs> this this death gamble right here was an algo driven guy at Goldman Sachs that said, you know what? I gotta take a shit. I'm out. Yeah, and that's what he did. <laughs> I'm kidding, but you know what I mean, guys. Yeah, my thing in terms of practicing shorts is a group. Yep, exactly. Um, so, uh, what do you consider a really small account? Anything under 3K in my eyes. Harry, what do you think? That's what I said. Under 4K, under 3K, under 2K, small account. Well, realistically, I guess if we're being like kind of like lenient with small, anything under 5K, guys, you have a really small account. Yeah. Let's just keep it there. Anything 10 or above, you have medium. Uh, anything 35,000 or more, you have a bigger account. You have an over PDT account. You can get a brokerage anywhere, Cobra, all the guys. And this is something that like, like Alex does not keep more than 35K in his account. He doesn't need to. None of us need to. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. Exactly. Harry Austin goes both ways with stocks. <laughs> uh, yeah. My main goal is to learn longs and understanding when to get out, when to get out by understanding how shorts trade. Um, then once I get good and solid on longs with consistency, I'll start learning to trade longs. Uh, T Bradley 90, do you only use three minute candles? Yes, I do. I noticed that all your videos are in three minute. The reason why is because I made famous kind of in this community more specifically than others is death candles. Yes, true. I can see a death candle like so on a three minute chart specifically like it slaps you in the face. Now let's actually change this to a one minute and I'll show you the difference. I, let me try to remember how to do this. Um, you add might time frame. Time. Like it might be, oh no, you got it. You got it. Yep. Okay. So we'll do one day, one minute. Let's change this. Hold on. This is why I use three minutes guys. I've, this is the only time frame. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you can't see it and sometimes you can, there's really no difference because it was so quick. This you can definitely see on a one minute, but guys, sometimes this you go to ALF, stops yesterday. right there. What's that, Harry? If you go to ALF from yesterday, it might be a little bit more clear on the point that you're trying to make. Yeah, I'll have to. Yep. I, I, it's going to. Yeah. 
yeah, guys, I can't see any death candles on ALF yesterday. Like, like not even that's a death candle. Like, I, like, let's see about the three minute. Was there any death candles on a three minute? I can't remember. No, I don't think so, no. No, not really. But the, but the difference is, the, what I'm trying to say, guys, is what were we just on ENTX? Sometimes on a one minute chart, it's not, it doesn't look like this. Like it's like half and then it continues on the next one minute candle. And I'm just like, dude, I can't fucking see the death candle. So I specifically trade because it eliminates enough of the noise that I can still see trend, but I can absolutely see when that stuff move or death candle is very prominent. That's why I trade three minutes. Yeah. 100%. Yep. Um, yep. So d hopefully that helps you, Alex. If you feel that you want to give that a try, the thing that I will tell you is the first year I was using one minutes, maybe first year and a half, the minute I found three minute candles, my buddy was like, dude, you got to use three minutes. I promise you, you'll never look back. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Fuck you. I put them on my charts for two weeks. I was like, dude, I cannot understand this. I don't get it. How the hell do you trade like this? After two weeks, I said I'd never look back again, and it was just home free, and I was like, oh, my God, my eyes are open. It takes two weeks of misery to really get used to them, but once you do, there's no comparison. In my eyes, I've converted a lot of traders on Twitter that you're impressed by, that you know, trust me, like some millionaire traders, I've converted them to three minutes over the years, over the last seven years. That's how powerful this chart is. Well, yeah, hundred percent. And like, I still, I think, I don't think it's on the computer I have now, but the computer I have before, there's literally a chart or a folder on there called Tosh's charts. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. No way. I would look at your fucking charts and be like, shit, this guy, this guy knows what he's doing. Like I, I need to have all this guy's charts before you deleted them on Twitter. Like I don't know. Maybe I don't, I, I looked for them the other day and I couldn't find it. I was going to post it in weekend mentoring and just say like, man, like I, but yeah, I would literally have a, a thing of your charts on there. Dude, that's so like, awesome. That's so I, I literally did. And you'll notice Harry in every single one, bro. What did I wait for in almost every chart? Death candles. hundred percent. That's 100%. it. That's it. <laughs> or it'd be those random fucking chat room pumps. Oh yeah. But those don't exist anymore. No, like they're they gone. back then they're gone. So what happened guys is like, I know you hear like the term farmer and stuff like that. And that was still pretty good at those. I used to hit those, those pumps because what would happen is, is before it became famous, like who those guys were specifically, you know, the ginger magician um, yeah. is every 9.5 times out of 10, those pumps would fail. And you could literally short the second he got in him or said he's in him. And you could scale it. Dude, I'd be sometimes scaling $3 against me because I knew the odds were so unbelievably rare. I'd take a loss on them that it would just pay. And they did. And nowadays it's like a 50-50, man. And it, I just... I, I, you go, I just go with more solid price action and stay away from the pumps more so on that regard now. Again, as a trader, you have to evolve. You have to go, wow, I used to have a serious edge there. Now I only have a semi-edge there. And maybe I don't want to fuck with a semi-edge. Maybe I want to wait for the thing that really pays me. Okay, so I just plugged in my external hard drive and I had it back in 2019. I, if you scroll down to the bottom of this chat, you can see. Dude, that's so funny. Oh my God, how many charts do you have in there? <laughs> Oh, fuck. A that's lot. hysterical, bro. That's back in 2019. That's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. Dude, we've, we've, been, a, we've been around for a long time, bro. <laughs> We're old. We're old. I know. Harry, post one. I'm, I'm like curious. I mean, I, let, me, let me see what you're talking I want to see what the market looked like back then. Post let one. Me, let I'm me curious. find a good one. Let me find a good one. I'm at, I'm at like ADIL. Yeah, okay. I'll post this one. I'll just post the first one because there's – there's a lot. I can probably share them all, to be honest. <laughs> you can share them. Oh, yep. Yeah, those were the pumps, dude. I used to hit every yeah. single one of those. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I love those pumps, man. Th th those were – I was the master of pumps, but the market changed for those. I just – you can't do them anymore, man. Oh, bro, you would fucking nail those. I was like, how is he able to short these random volume <laughs> things? What the hell? Where yeah, that was an, it was an art form, bro. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, man, this guy, this freaking guy. Bro, they would have like literally like 200, 300,000 volume on them, but I would know exactly where the top was. It was weird. It was, uh, who knows, man? I was just plugged in. Crazy. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. I long 90% of the time, so no right or wrong way, long or short. Be patient to learn your brain's niche. I like that, Stan. Yes. Oh, my God. Bow's an algo, dude, for sure. 
Yep, Val fought some front side today, it looks like, on Alf. That was today. That yep, was yesterday. But, was that today? That was today, right? Yesterday, I think. Oh, that was yesterday. Yeah. I was going to say, that doesn't look like today. Um, yeah, yeah. Val, Val will tell you when he shorts front side, man. I'm telling you, he, he, will, he will definitely tell you. Um, really, where's the candle? It still cracks me up. Best quote ever. Credit Edson. Hey, Tosh, I've been watching the Lions videos and still having trouble drawing too many lines. How do you draw focus on just the major lines? Um, give me, guys, give me a really good example of something. Um, here, we'll do, I don't think, no, because I usually it's pre-market, right? So I base everything off, like, I'll just give you an example for all, right? Like today, I'm always a pre-market trader or a pre-market line drawer. So I base everything off what the stock previously did before, right? And I think Harry loves that too when he yeah. looks or tackles the short side. But here's the thing that I love to do. So I, I love mountain ranges, man. If you're hitting low hanging fruit like Alf, where is the general accumulation of where all the mountain ranges were? I would write right here for um, pre-market based on this top, this top, this top, because I would scale up to the top, obviously. So I put like my first line right there, second line right there. But if this was a day one pre-market, you just draw them at the mountain ranges, man. I mean, like, this is how I've done it for seven years, dude. Where are the tops? Draw them out, pinpoint them, circle them, make them famous. And then when they pop up to the levels, if it's a not, if it correlates with a whole and half dollar level, that's where, you know, resistance is. That's where, you know, the first touch should fail. That's where, you know, you're going to have an edge. That's you. That's where, you know, you can nail them, bill. And if you have to kind of, you know, gravitate towards a common ground of all three, do that. And then again, you know, like 15 would be the first, I didn't see that that was a whole and a half dollar number. That would be the first one. So that would be the first one I would draw. 15. Why? Because it correlates with kind of this top and these two, and that's a whole and a half dollar number. And then I'd probably go up to 1550 realistically, if I really look at these. And then if you want to give yourself perfect range and hit the mountaintop, then you can start right here, but that's a lot of range at the base. Cause that's a, the base is usually where they go to and not the wicks. So like, as you can see, the base of this one would be 1502 base of this one would be 1526 and base of this one would start at like 1460 you know yeah. the bases are more powerful than wicks in my in my journey of trading yeah <laughs> dude you're giving me memories man yeah look at these freaking low volume pumps oh man <laughs> oh shit you do have a lot i man. used to i used to save them man bro I, I i would i literally went on on das to like i would also go in das and I would save the same chart and DAS with the exact line. And I'd that's be like, so funny, man. That's yeah, what that those are, I think I'm, I can almost guarantee that any chart that looked like that, they're all farmer. They used to be. Yeah. No, I know. I, I, I figured it out and I was like, shit, that makes so much sense. <laughs> man, walk down memory lane, bro. Seriously. Bro, I can't believe it. 2019. That is insane. No, that's crazy, man. That just goes to show you how long we've been in this game, man. Because, because Harry, I was trading for, freaking at least three years before that i think dude or yeah. or maybe i i don't know dude I, I can't even remember the first day i met can you believe that dude i don't even know what my anniversary as a trader is it pisses me off i'm always like what the fuck did i place my first trade what year <laughs> yeah i remember i was i was i was definitely in grade 11 grade 12 when i first started for sure because i remember being in uh in high school and um i i was trading like in high school that's crazy, man. I wish to God I saved all those charts, dude. I like completely like lost hard drives of the years, eradicated. Cause I used to keep that like, like, um, like with the full process, like what I was talking about earlier, guys, like I kept a lot of these for, this is back when I used to keep them. Like, and I made this process for you guys that I kind of understand like what I look for, or what we do, but dude, I used to have, I'm not kidding Harry. I probably had 400 charts like this. Yeah. Easy, easy, easily, easy. easily. Cause they're just good examples to pass to the next generation. But man, yeah. just whether it's getting lazy over the years or, or just getting stupid and losing heart. I just, I just lost, you go through computer after computer. I just lost yeah. all of them. Dude. Well, it's the same as me. Like I used to, I used to also post charts on Twitter like every single day, but just like kind of like, also, like you were talking about in that rant too, like you just kind of just get bored of it. And it's just like, I don't need all these people like liking it or saying, oh, congrats. Like when you have a boring, consistent process, 
Like, if that's not gambling and that's just doing the same thing every day. Yeah. It's just like another day, another chart. This is OBLN. This is NBEV. Same shit, different pile. Like, it's the same chart. All these are the same, you know. Well, um, mine, my predicament turned into a workload thing. Meaning, when I used to post on Twitter, the reason why I stopped posting charts on Twitter, actually, it got to a point where even in chat, I stopped... I got too much demand on top of the 10,000 things behind the scenes that I do that, that you don't see, whether it's emails or social media or keeping the business running, you know, with Alex and Bowen, there's so much on my mind that another notification sometimes makes me want to jump off a bridge. And, yeah. and I get three guys ask me on Twitter. I am the type of guy where I cannot let, I can't rest until I've pleased everybody, meaning like, exactly. I have to answer this person back. I have to, answer. when I have a hundred messages on Twitter of, hey Tosh, why did you short there? I can't fucking meditate or rest until they're all answered. So I had to, I had to stop you. I have too much other stuff to focus on. Like I'm just that type of person where my brain just has to OCD finish it before I can give myself time. And it's never ending when you post charts, it's never ending. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely, definitely agree. Yeah, dude, it's, it, it's, it, it, yeah, I would delete my Twitter and Instagram tomorrow if it wasn't for the business. I just, I, the, the endless notifications, it, it really takes a toll on you, man. I, yep. I can barely log into Instagram these days or social media without seeing 10,000 billionaires. And then you start comparing your own life and you're like, holy shit, dude, I know I do good, but damn, look at this guy. And then you no, get, no. right? No, I know it's never enough. There's always going to be someone better than you. And that's the nature of this business. And this is why I like to keep this kind of podcast style, guys, is this is, this is cool stuff to talk about, right? This is some stuff that like a lot of people don't talk about. I mean, we could talk about lines all day, but you guys can figure out lines really easily. This is like what it means to be a trader over years is what it means to keep your sanity. This is what it means to deal with losses, et cetera, et cetera. And being a trader, you have to protect your mental. You have to protect your own thinking every single day because if you let your mind go your skill is gone yeah it's gone dude i've seen traders trade for five years be ballers be awesome be very profitable and they let their mind go and they're and they couldn't they can't trade their way out of paper bag now yeah and no, i'm like dude it's because your yeah. mind is gone bro yeah it's important it's important you gotta have that you gotta have really really in my opinion like the mental side is so, so important. And it's, it can be, it can be like simple things as like, you know, taking breaks, but also like, just like you were talking about today, like you were like, okay, I'm taking the day off today because whatever, you know, by taking that day off, you know, that you're saving yourself from a loss. And also you're not going to let that loss snowball and snowball and snowball and snowball that can get you in that type of predicament, you know? Yep. I, I, who knows if I didn't save myself four grand today, because I probably would have gotten squeezed and try to fight a stock. Yeah. 100%. Like you have to think about things like that, right? Yeah. No, I um, do agree. you always use the daily chart to confirm your pre-market lines along with pivot lines? Uh, Nick, um, good question. I do if it's ambiguous. And what I mean by that is I, if I have to question pre-market because I'm a little bit like, and eh, this doesn't feel like a crazy solid line pre-market, I will check. Otherwise, no. If it's very clear pre-market, I go, no, dude, this is the line. I don't even need to see the daily. This is where I want to be. Uh, yeah. And I think for me, like, I obviously map out the main daily lines because like, you just want to know. But like, for me, like, unless like, it's uncharted territory, the pre market can really map out a good guide for me. So I don't, I don't look at every single little daily line. If it's a big daily line, then I'll, I'll pay attention to it. But I love using the pre-market chart to map out where I'm going to go because the stock has already gone there and it's already gone there today. And so for me, like the pre-market is usually enough because if you're, yep, if you're yep. going too, in, too much into detail, like, oh, this pre-market line, but oh, this pivot line, but oh, this daily line, but oh, this whatever, and this bag holder and this VWAP, whatever, and you, you get too complicated. You're going to overcomplicate your brain. Yeah. And you're just going to go nuts. So I like to keep it simple. Pre-market for me, the pivot is good. And anything other than that, unless it's a big, big daily line, no. Nah. Like I'm not let, let me put it to you as simple as I can. If I never was able to see a daily chart, I'd still have a trading career. Yeah, me too. hundred percent. hundred percent, right, Harry? Is if I yeah. can see pre-market, I have a trading career. If I can't see pre-market, then I need the daily chart, of course. That's like a, that is like, that's like a little like tip 
that we're just kind of giving away. Because, <laughs> 1,000%. It, it, because, like, I mean, the daily chart, it, it, it's important. Don't get me wrong. The daily chart's more about the story, you know? Like Here's you can, what I see on the daily chart when I look at this. Take two seconds. Holy crap job. Is this a pump? And it'll go back to $4. But when? Yeah. When is the time frame? So if the daily chart's super ambiguous, what's it doing pre-market? And if this is a piece of dookie, it's a piece of dookie. I look at this and I go, there's a really good chance of failing once this demand stops. Yeah. Anyway, I got to head out because I got to pick my girlfriend up. I just, I dropped her off after the vaccine. She doesn't have her car. Bro, do your thing. Hey, Harry, thank you so much for coming on, man. I, I think you gave some really good tips on the long side and kind of like to kind of almost debate my short side perspective. I love it, dude. Thank you so much, man. We'll, yeah, I, uh, we'll talk soon. I love coming on here and thanks, Tosh. And I'll see everyone, you know, soon. Harry, sure. you are welcome anytime, buddy. Go do your thing. I love it. All right. See you, buddy. See you, bud. Bye. Man, that is one genuine dude, man. Let me tell you, that kid is going places that kid is so going play dude he's like 21 years old man i started my trading career at 23 bro now i'm almost 31 oh shit there you go okay i guess i have been doing this almost eight years damn I'm like a grandpa in this industry dude freaking harry <laughs> fucking 21 year old is showing us all up <laughs> son of a bitch now i'm mad now i'm pissed uh yeah dude let, let, let's do a couple more questions uh, uh and then i'll wrap this up because i know we're getting i know we're getting in the wire um, hey, Tosh, can I – oh, oh, yeah, yeah, come on, man. Hold on. Samuel, I'll bring you on real quick, and then, uh, and then we'll uh, wrap this up. Sam, can you, can you hear me? Hey, yeah, can you hear me? Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Dude, I'm doing good, man. I'm super exhausted. I'm probably going to do the fattest nap of my life after this webinar, but, dude, let's talk about it. What's up with the PDT? Yeah, so it's super, super quick question, but I just wanted, you know, advice from somebody a little bit more experienced. Um, so I've got about a, a $4,000 account right now. Okay, um, okay. And I've got some in savings. But my question was, I have a, a brother of mine. He's, you know, he's pretty rich. Money's not a problem for him. Um, and he offered to lend me money to get over PDT. Um, now, the thing is, it wouldn't be money to trade with. It would literally be just the money to get me over PDT to sit in my account. And then I would continue only to trade as if I only had $4,000. Um, my question is, is there anything that I'm not thinking about that might be a bad idea to do that? Or is the, you know, getting over PDT, is that a lesson I need to learn? Or do you ah. guys think it could be a good idea for me, you know, to be able to get over PDT to kind of be able to scalp and channel trade like MIC teaches, um, what would kind of be your guys' advice on that maybe? You know, man, that is so hard to give advice on that because there is some risk with that and everybody's different. I will, get, I, I'm going to answer your question with a story. Okay. And this is my story. When I first started, I had $7,500 to my name, you know, whatever, eight years ago, right? That I was willing to put into my trading accounts that obviously I had lifestyle and I was working back then and doing construction and all these jobs I just really didn't like. And I didn't have a crazy amount of money saved up, man. I kind of fucked around, spent money like crazy. I had 7,500 bucks to start. Mm. And what I did was is I put $2,500 in a three PDT account. So I had, you know, I had an E-Trade, I had a TD Ameritrade, I had another one, et cetera, interactive brokers at the time. Those were my three. So I had nine trades a week. But here's what I did. I did what you, I found a bankroller and I am a very disciplined person. Me too. Very fucking disciplined. Dude, when I say discipline, I haven't had alcohol in years. I, I, I don't, I haven't had gluten in years. I haven't had dairy in six months. Like I'm a very, very, very disciplined person, Sam. If mm. that's not you, this will never work. Right. If you are like me, you can make it work. It's not exactly my advice, man, because you're using someone else's money and that is going to always play like a record in your brain. Now I used a bankroller, but when I say that I use myself. Mm. And when I say I use myself, I used credit cards. So back in the day when I had 7,500 and I was trading for four months, six months, I went like this. I went, you know what, dude, I've got really, really good credit. I've got a bunch of credit cards. And back then there was this trick that you could do with PayPal where you could literally like send an invoice to your girlfriend at the time or your dad or something. 
and have them charge your credit card, they'd get sent seven grand and just have them kick the money back to you. So I did tricks like that where I was, li- and, and, they, and there was no, um, there were no fees for it, right? It was like very, very little fees. So it was just a way to utilize the credit card system. Say, you know, I can pull money out of my own credit cards without paying an astronomical fee. You would just pay the interest on the money that you owed, correct? So I back then would open up a 0%, you know, credit card. You send my dad seven grand and be like, hey dad, give me that back, you know, and I'll give you, I'll buy you lunch for doing it. Whatever, what have you. And obviously then you have to figure out taxes with people and be like, all right, well, fuck, maybe here's 400 bucks whatever, what have you. It's a long story. I bankrolled myself off lending money because I knew I was so good with the scalps and stuff. I needed to take a chance on myself and I needed PET because I needed to trade more than three days or, or three times a week. It worked, but I don't recommend it, man. I don't recommend it, bro. The level of stress I was under was very hard. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of like why I was wanting to come on. Cause you know, it's, it's kind of a unique with what situation you're in or, you know, who you're borrowing the money from, what type of person you are. And cause like, for me, I'm, I'm very similar to you. So okay. I'm, ex- I'm extremely disciplined. So I've got, you know, a $4,000 account right now. I've got like, you know, $10,000 in my savings that I'm not even putting in my account because I'm just right. saving it up. And so, you know, with my $4,000 account, even what I'm doing right now, I'm trading with like, you know, 20 shares to 60 shares as learning the process. Um, but it's, it's, you know, difficult when you only have three day trades. So it's, Sam, I'm, let me, let me ask the most important question. How yeah. old are you? Uh, I'm 19. The, the, the second question I would ask you, why are you trying to grow up so quickly? <laughs> that's the, that's the real question, brother. You are 19. You are so above any 19 year old I've ever met. Why do you want to be 31 tomorrow? Well, that's you know, what I, I would say brother, truly that if, if I, if you were my son and I was talking to my, my offspring, I would say, brother, work your nuts off and, and go the organic way versus maybe trying to find a bankroll and putting unnecessary stress on yourself at 19. But again, I am no more than an educator. I'm not a life guru. I'm right. not a shaman. If you think that that would work for you, I can't say it's going to be the play. I can't say it wouldn't. I'm just going to say that there are a level of emotions of emotion, Samuel, that you are n- not going to know until you're in them. They're going to sure. spring up in your trading only when you're actually in the situation of like, okay, I'm doing my process, but fuck, I owe this guy money. Yeah. So I don't know, dude. I don't, I, 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 it's so hard because like, I want to give you advice, but I, I kind of feel like I can't. So I'm just, yeah. I'm just going to tell you how I did it. I took a major bankroll off credit cards, which is really not my money. I basically got bankrolled by the bank back then, but it worked out maybe only because it was my debt and not somebody else's debt or money. Sure. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. But I that's... will say it will add an element of stress to you, brother, which I wouldn't recommend. And I'd say at 19, dude, there's, you're good, dude. You don't have to rush to grow up, man. I'd say work your nuts off truly, um, you know, save as much as you can do what you're doing now. Um, stay on the beaten path. The, I just don't like debt, man. I, I, I hate debt, bro. I really do. And whether you're indebted to somebody else, or you're indebted to a bank or a credit card. I lived it. I lived it. It's stressful, man. Debt yeah. kills people more than viruses do. I swear. It's, it's insane, dude. People yeah. underestimate what debt is. It is the biggest killer of our society. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I, I knew it was going to be a hard one for you to answer because especially, you know, when you're when you're in a public platform, you got a lot of people who are <laughs> yeah, listening and, and I kind of give advice, but I, but again, right. <laughs> because if you say something that somebody will come back with you in a year, blowing up their account and like, I borrowed money because you told this dude too, and now I'm gone and I'm in debt. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I'll tell you, man, you definitely made me think outside the box on that one. And I do appreciate that. The only thing I would say is if it was your father and he was like, listen, son, I'm, I'm bankrolling you because I genuinely don't necessarily care about this money or I can't afford to lose it and I'm raising my son that that may be different but if you just kind of know a family friend it's I feel like it might just put too much stress on you but again it is good that you're disciplined and it is good that you think that you can do exactly what you think you can which I hope you can but at the end of the day it, it it's very risky buddy yeah yeah this this brother I actually I live with him so we're roommates and so he sees me every day he sees me trading and 
you know, he's bringing in a lot of money. And he's like, bro, it's sitting in my bank account. Like I, it'll sit in my bank account or sit in your broker account if you want it. And so I've been thinking about it, but I, I appreciate all your advice and your, and your opinions on it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at the, at the end of the day, buddy, if I was teaching a financial literacy course or I was teaching anything directly correlated to money, not even trading, literally like fuck trading, right? Anything that relates to money is I would tell people to run from debt unless right. it was to get what, you know, stock Stan was talking about stock slayer is appreciating assets where someone else is actually paying the debt down. So you take on, you know, the good, what's called good debt versus bad debt. See, bad debt is credit card debt or something that you owe somebody else where you're going to have to pay monthly. And it's actually literally going to take money from your pocket. See, right. good debt is saying, oh, okay, I'm very comfortable in life. I want to get more comfortable. So I'll go to JP Morgan Chase. I'll get a $200,000, you know, loan. I'll buy this rental property and I'll have someone every single month pay me directly by paying down my debt which is going to build your equity and net worth in life. That's right. very different. There are two types of debt. Borrowing from someone to fund a trading career or, or do a PDT, which is kind of the same thing in a, in, a, in a way, depending on how you look at it. It's just, it borders on the line of bad debt, which is the most risky Fair. and the most stressful. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Debt, debt's no joke, brother. It adds a different layer. It adds a different layer and you don't know how much until you're actually in it. Right. Yeah. I just, you know, man, I'm just, I'm always been very ego driven in this regard and, <laughs> and very stubborn. I don't like to owe anybody anything, bro. I don't like to owe anybody a freaking car ride, let alone money. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, that's up to you, man. You gotta, that's something you gotta make your decision, but I hope, that answered as best I can from someone who's been through what you're trying to take on a certain level of debt. This, and that, I mean, that, that's just my experience, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I really appreciate your advice. And also thank you to everybody in the channel who sent their opinion and uh, opinions. And I'll make sure to go through those as well. Absolutely, man. Dude, uh, Samuel, I would say, man, you are killing it so much, man. Don't go too quick, brother. <laughs> I mean, you're doing fine for a 19 year old, man. I'd say, I'd say you're in a rush to grow up, which I definitely appreciate because I've always been in a rush to grow up too. Shit. I've, I, I, I'm the type of guy where I can't wait for 40 and 50. I'm not the type of guy who's like, oh my God, I'm getting older, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, the wisdom that's going to come at 40, the opportunity is going to come at 50. Like I embrace all that. So I get it, but just be careful, buddy. Yep. I got you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tosh. You're awesome, man. Keep fighting a good fight, bud. All right. Thank you. See you, bud. Guys, that was awesome. It's always really cool to understand different perspectives of all ages, you know, what people are going through, what they're deciding, decisions that we're trying to make. We're all in this together and we all have different perspectives. And I think that's the beauty of the community that is MIC is 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 these level of questions that we can talk about man in an open forum and and i know i i'm so thankful that samuel came on with that question because i know in my heart that there's a thousand people wondering the same thing that are maybe in that predicament and i hope i hope my perspective my perspective added some layer of clarification on it, you, what someone's been through or whatever but Again, guys, at the end of the day, questions like that, you do have to iron out yourself and really look in the mirror and say, you know, what's my comfort level for something of that degree or something of that standard? It's very different than, um, you know, other decisions. So again, man, we all have to make those decisions ourselves, even though sometimes it's tough. Believe me, I've been there. Um, but I will say, keep fighting the good fight, keep discipline and, uh, you know, keep risk management in check and only take on what you truly can handle because, you know, things like that are a different, they're a different beast. So guys, this has been awesome. I'm going to close this up before we're all deafened by the, uh, by the closing bell of TD Ameritrade. Love you guys. We'll do this next Wednesday. Maybe Bow wants to come on next Wednesday, uh, bring on mods again, maybe Harry, but uh, this is a lot of fun, man. I hope, I hope we got some questions answered and, uh, and you guys definitely had a good Wednesday, but uh, I'm going to kick out of here. I'm going to go take a big old nap and uh, do, we'll do this next week. See you guys. Thanks guys.